Hello all you wonderful, beautiful people. Thank you for clicking on my channel. Today I wanted to talk about my personal top 10 favorite Genesis songs just from the Peter Gabriel era. Genesis was one of the defining progressive rock bands and when Phil Collins was at the helm they went on to be one of the biggest bands in the world. And before we go any further I just want to make clear that I love all eras of Genesis from the super esoteric proggy Peter Gabriel era all the way up to their more pop oriented sound in the late 80s and early 90s. The reason that I wanted to focus just on the Peter Gabriel era is because it is the era I was first introduced to the band as, it's the one I'm the most familiar with, and I feel as though it's not exactly fair to compare stuff like The Knife to stuff like Jesus He Knows Me. <laughs> it's not exactly comparing apples to apples, and so for that reason I feel like the band Genesis, you could probably split up into three eras the early stuff with Peter Gabriel, the still progressive era with Phil Collins, and then the just straight up pop rock era with Phil Collins. And because each one of those eras is so different, I just figured instead of making a top 20, make it a top 10 and uh, maybe I'll do those other two eras in the future. And even though this is the top 10 songs from the Peter Gabriel era, there's at least one song on this list where Peter Gabriel is not singing on it, Phil Collins is actually singing on it, but it is still from the Peter Gabriel era. So with all that out of the way, let's just get right into it. And coming in at number 10 is the song Seven Stones off of the album Nursery Crime. The song has a really great mellow keyboard intro and Phil Collins drumming on this track helps to give the song momentum while still being relaxed and subdued and laid back. With his drumming, he's giving the song a boost while still being laid back and being able to give the keyboards, the guitars, the vocals center stage while still giving the song that momentum, which in the hands of a less capable drummer, less capable musicians, I think it would have been more difficult to pull off. So just when you're thinking you have this song figured out, at around 1 minute and 20 seconds in, the entire feel of the song changes. You get a little uptick in the tempo, or at least it feels like that. You have Peter Gabriel with some really cool vocal harmonies coming in. And the foundation of this change that comes in to the bridge was actually set up really well in the intro of the song with the keyboards, but it was done so in a subtle way so that it feels completely different and yet it also feels like you should have expected it. I guess what I should have said is that it is a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. <laughs> That's fucking stupid. It also highlights that that keyboard intro wasn't just a gimmick, it wasn't just some random idea that they tossed out there to start the song. It was actually laying the foundation for what would come later. And you're going to hear me say this a lot, but I absolutely love Peter Gabriel's vocal performance on this song. The vocal harmonies working together with the keyboards, with the drums, it just kind of has an epic feel without being too overblown and too over the top. For all those reasons, that song Seven Stones is number 10 for me. And coming in at number 9 for me is Can Utilities and the Coastliners off of Foxtrot. Steve Hackett as a guitar player is incredible and his acoustic intro for this song is really mesmerizing. Something else that I find impressive is the way that Peter Gabriel was able to craft a vocal melody based around what Steve Hackett was playing. It isn't exactly the most simplistic guitar part that he has going on and I would imagine that it was a pretty challenging task to try to craft a melody that fit in with that. The reason that the song is on this list and that it is one of my favorite Genesis songs though is once again because of a change in feel that the band introduces and they really stick the landing with this one. At about a minute and 50 seconds into the song all the other instruments drop out and Steve Hackett is left playing this really driving acoustic riff before all the other instruments come back in one by one and then once again full band with vocals comes in and it is just one of the coolest instrumental breaks that I've ever heard in my life. It's just really mind-blowing how groovy, how much emotion, and how well every single member of the band is playing at that section. Genesis in general was always filled with amazing musicianship, but I think that this part in Can Utility and the Coastliners is one of their best moments. One last thing about this song is that at about four minutes in, we get an absolutely jaw-dropping bass section. Uh, it's sort of a bass feature, bass solo. Mike Rutherford is an incredible player, and the stuff that he's playing here is insane sounding. It, um, 
it's still impressive today, all these decades later. I can't imagine how impressive it must have been back in 1972 or 73, whenever this song came out. I think it was 72. I could be wrong. But for all those reasons and more, Can Utility and the Coastliners is my number nine. If you haven't heard this song, definitely go check it out. Coming in at number eight is the song Four Absent Friends from the album Nursery Crime. This is the song I was talking about that Phil Collins sings on. <laughs> Even in the top 10 Genesis songs from the Peter Gabriel era, Phil Collins still sneaks his way into the vocals. <laughs> this song is just a short and beautiful piece, only coming in at about a minute and a half long with Phil Collins singing and Steve Hackett playing his classically inspired acoustic guitar. The song is just short, it's beautiful. Steve Hackett's acoustic playing is always something that is really amazing to listen to. He was such a talented player, especially when he was kind of pulling from his more classical influences. Phil Collins has a beautiful voice, but we all know that. And I really love the melancholic vibe, the sort of sad but sweet emotion that this song evokes. That's about all I have to say for this. Not much, but it is a song that's only about a minute and 30 seconds long. So it would kind of be pointless to go on and on about it. But Four Absent Friends is a great song. It's short, sweet, it's to the point. Go check it out. Coming in at number seven is Timetable from Foxtrot. This song feels like it was a forerunner to the more pop-oriented sound that Genesis would adopt in the 1980s, except it was done in the Peter Gabriel era. I like how it shows the band was always willing to explore and expand their sound into different musical genres. The chorus to the song is very catchy, and the piano motif that plays after each chorus is also something that's really easy to get stuck in your head. Something else I love about this song is just how restrained Steve Hackett's guitar line were. He really knew when to hold back and to let the piano take the lead. He serves the song, not his ego, and that's the mark of a great musician. Coming in at number six is the song The Knife from the album Trespass. Up until this point, all the songs I've mentioned are good songs. The Knife and the five songs after this are songs that I just think are absolute bangers from beginning to end that I will probably rave and ramble about to the point where I don't make much sense, but here we go. This song is one of the few early Genesis songs that has a fair bit of aggression to it, especially when compared to the songs that have been on the list so far. I mean, to put it simply, this song just kicks all sorts of ass. Right from the beginning with the guitar and the keyboards driving into the lyrics, there's an instant ominous tone, there's a bit of aggression, there's a bit of fear. It sounds almost proto-metal. This song just is one of their best, for sure. As soon as Peter Gabriel enters with the vocals, he is just spitting out the lyrics with so much conviction and so much emotion. Speaking about the lyrics, I really appreciate the fact that they are written from the point of view of an unreliable narrator. I mean, the song is being told from the perspective of a violent revolutionary who is telling his followers, some of you are going to die, but it will be worth it for the freedom that I will provide. I mean, that subject matter is so metal, right? Even though Genesis is not a metal band, I'm not saying that. That subject matter is pretty fucking metal. I also love the line, we must strike at the lies that spread like disease to our minds. It's another line that heavily implies that the character who is singing the song is not someone who should be trusted with the power that they are seeking. Going back to the music, the guitar riff that starts at around 5 minutes and 20 seconds in is particularly tasteful and groovy and just really fun to listen to. The whole band really slaps for that part. <laughs> also, I just want to point out that Anthony Phillips was the guitar player who played on this song, not Steve Hackett. This was before Steve Hackett joined the band. And I just want to make sure I point that out because Anthony Phillips was also a pretty incredible guitar player, judging by this song. John Mayhew was the drummer for Genesis at this time. This was once again before Phil Collins joined the band, and John Mayhew also does a great job on the drums. Even though the song is only number six on this list, I just want to point out again that there is a big quality and difference for how much I love this song compared to how much I love the previous four songs on this list. The only reason that The Knife isn't higher on the list for me is because the next five songs still retain that similar aggression and intensity that The Knife has, but they do a better job of blending it with the more mystical, almost renaissance fair quality that Genesis had in their early years. Coming in at number five for me is Return of the Giant Hogweed from Nursery Crime. I really enjoy the extended intro for this song. It's just guitar and keyboard harmonies bringing you into the verse. Starting off with this song, Peter Gabriel has a bit more grit in his voice. It's a little bit more gravelly and a little bit more raspy. In a similar way to how the lyrics of Timetable contrast with the music, I love how the music of this song is this big, epic, very serious sounding song, and yet the lyrics are kind of 
borderline ridiculous. You have lyrics dealing with a gigantic hogweed that was brought over from Russia and is now taking over all of England, and none of their pesticides can kill it. <laughs> lyrics like that that are clearly a bit tongue-in-cheek combined with just the seriousness of the musicianship and the epic nature of the music itself. <laughs> it's not full-on parody, but it, it definitely does seem like the band is having a bit of fun and that makes it fun to listen to. <laughs> Another reason the song is so high for me is because of the instrumental passage that happens at around 5 minutes, 5 minutes and 20 seconds into the song. It's just the piano part, the entire band drops out, and when the band starts coming in one by one again, you have Steve Hackett playing these really beautiful guitar slides that sound almost like whale singing. I just can't overstate how amazing the musicianship is on songs like this. All the guys in Genesis were decades ahead of their time, and as much as I love so many different musicians, when I listen to what Genesis did in these albums, it's just still mind-boggling. And I guess I could say that about pretty much any band I'm listening to, but I've been finding myself saying it a lot about Genesis in particular lately. Coming in at number four is the song Get Em Out by Friday from the album Foxtrot. I love the instant guitar and jazzy drumming that starts the song off. The jazzy quality of that intro juxtaposed with the absolutely driving, powerful, almost violent sounding verse that starts at around 47 seconds in is just really cool. And the lyrics from this song are some of Peter Gabriel's best. It's one of the few Genesis songs from this era that just has a real social awareness. Peter Gabriel tells the story of people being evicted from their homes by a landlord who is just seeing dollar signs. The story of the lyrics in the song also give Peter Gabriel a great chance to just play around with the different characters he's singing as. He can sing as the tenants, he can sing as the landlord, he can sing as a lawyer, he can sing as the judge. He goes on to sing as other characters as the song goes on. For certain songs, the switching into different characters might be a bit of a turnoff, it might be a bit abrupt, but for this song I think it just fits really, really well. Speaking again about the lyrics, I love the line, in the interest of humanity. That line is repeated throughout the song, and the more it's used, the more sarcastic it becomes in tone. Going back to the actual music of the song, there's an absolutely beautiful section at around 4 minutes and 50 seconds in, where you have oboe and flute and piano playing. I just wanted to point that out because it, upon my last listen of this song, I just was really struck by how beautiful that whole section was. Okay, so now these are my top three favorite songs, and quite honestly, it was really hard to choose between the three of them, but this is where I'm at as of the time of recording and writing this stuff. Coming in at number three for me is the song Watcher of the Skies from the album Foxtrot. I mean, this song, you guys. Oh my god, this song. This song is so fucking good. From the first second the song starts playing and you hear the isolated keyboard, you know you're in for something special, and it doesn't disappoint. I've mentioned before how I love Mike Rutherford's bass playing, and the bass riff that he comes up with for this song in the intro, once the whole band kicks in, is one of the most insanely catchy, badass rhythmic motifs I've ever heard. That rhythm will get stuck in your head, <laughs> even with my subpar playing of it. I also really want to highlight again how Peter Gabriel is great at crafting a melody around these really off-kilter rhythms that the band is playing. I mean, this song, Watcher of the Skies, was chosen to be the first track on the album for a reason. It is an absolute banger, and it sets the tone for the album. You know, now that I think about it, the top three songs on this list were all the first songs on their respective albums, so... <laughs> Genesis really knew how to start their albums off with a bang. So coming in at number two is The Musical Box from Nursery Crime. The Musical Box was the first song off of Nursery Crime. It's the first song with Phil Collins and Steve Hackett in the band. It's the first song that I heard from this era of Genesis as a kid. Honestly, this song was this close to being number one for me. It's pretty much interchangeable with the song that is number one. So all the praise that I'm going to heap onto the musical box can also be said of the number one song on this list. This song just encapsulates everything that Peter Gabriel era Genesis had going for it in 10 minutes and 26 seconds of absolute perfection. From the very beginning, we have Tony Banks on the keyboards and Steve Hackett on guitar setting up an almost medieval sounding quality of this song. Acoustic guitar, keyboards, 
flute. And as a guitar player, I'm blown away by this song. Steve Hackett really outdid himself with it. Over the space of ten and a half minutes, he's able to show just how many styles of music he can play really, really well. Eventually, that kind of quasi-Renaissance Fair intro paves way to just a steady eighth note pattern on the guitar. And by the time Peter Gabriel comes in with the vocals, he is singing some of his most emotionally impactful vocal lines that he ever sang throughout his career. The selective use of vocal harmonies and the emphasis on the line, the nurse will tell you lies about a kingdom beyond the skies in the beginning of this song, really sets up this mystical, dreamlike, but also maybe a little eerie quality to the song. And at about a minute and 25 seconds in, the guitar changes keys, and that feeling of slight ominous or slight fear now becomes a sense of impending doom. Tension's rising, but the music has not really kicked in yet, although you are really aware that something is coming. And that's just something that this era of Genesis did so well, mixing fairy tales with like a sinister quality. It's almost like taking the original grim fairy tales and putting them to music. And that something bigger that's on its way comes at around 3 minutes and 40 seconds into the song. After what could be an entire song's length of just acoustic guitar, keyboards, and some accents from the drums, at 3 minutes and 40 seconds into the song, the distortion comes on and you get one of the biggest, most bombastic, just absolutely fucking slamming instrumental passages you will ever hear in your goddamn life. I mean, I know I'm going a little overboard, but you have this absolutely killer keyboard riff that is reminiscent of something that John Lord would do with Deep Purple, and an absolutely screeching guitar solo. Phil Collins is not playing a standard backbeat on the drums for this section. He is playing, like, John Bonham-style triplets with the drums. They sound like rolling boulders. But then it gets even better because they once again bring the song back down and then build it back up again, and it's just as good as it was the first time. <laughs> the entire band just gets soft and Peter Gabriel is almost whispering into your ear <laughs> right before shit hits the fan again. <laughs> and you would think that a song couldn't pull the same trick twice. Like it started off soft and then it went big and now it's soft again. But you're not going to be fooled as a listener. You're, you're expecting the heavy part to come in again. But they still play with your expectations and their use of dynamics makes that second transition into the bombastic, almost borderline heavy metal section once again incredible. I just also want to say I think Phil Collins is a bit overlooked as a drummer. His career was overshadowed by his pop success in the late 80s and early 90s. And if you've only ever heard In the Air tonight, you're really doing yourself a disservice by not listening to early Genesis, Brand X, and other artists he worked with during this time. His drumming is absolutely insane. He is so effortless as a drummer while playing absolutely insanely technical stuff. Um, like I said, listen to Brand X, listen to songs like The Musical Box, listen to songs like Dance on a Volcano, and it's easy to see why so many people respect Phil Collins as a drummer certainly other drummers too, and I think that he is easily up there with all the greats, and you can name pretty much any modern drummer, and i say that Phil Collins is on par with them. I think most of them would agree to. <laughs> For all those reasons, The Musical Box is my second favorite Genesis song. I'll be honest, it's pretty much tied with number one for me. I just had to pick one to be one and one to be two. And that's where I was at when I was writing this. One of the songs that's not on this list but probably would have been number 11 for me is Supper's Ready. And I just wanted to make sure I pointed that out before saying what number one is. Number one for me is Dancing with the Moonlit Night from Selling England by the Pound. I absolutely love this song but I might not have too much to say about it for the simple reason that Dancing with the Moonlit Night for me just feels like a more refined, more polished version of the musical box. If you only listen to one song from the Peter Gabriel era of Genesis, I say listen to Dancing with the Moonlit Night. The beginning of the song once again has acoustic guitar, but this time Peter Gabriel starts off with his vocals before that comes in. I think Peter Gabriel delivers possibly his best vocal performance of all time on this song. His voice is just so emotive, he just is so clear. Being that this song was based off of a Scottish song, the beginning kind of sounds slightly Celtic, which is something that I always love. I also want to point out how amazing the piano sounds in this song. Um, Tony Banks would usually be using electric keyboards, organs, things like that. The fact that he seems to be playing a grand piano on this song gives it a special flair that a lot of the other Genesis songs don't have. It just makes it that more beautiful and that more effective when it comes in. 
And just like with the musical box, the song does eventually pick up and transition into a more hard rock focused sound. The guitars and the keyboards and the drums are all once again going ham. Like I said, a lot of what I can say about this song, I've already said about the musical box. And honestly, the reason that Dancing with the Moonlit Night is number one is because of the riff that kicks in at 3 minutes and 46 seconds into the song. You have this amazing keyboard riff that kicks in while the drums are just absolutely grouping with the bass and the guitar. It is one of the coolest sections of progressive rock I've ever heard, and it's something that still sounds pretty modern. I would actually like to see Dream Theater do a cover of Dancing with the Moonlit Night. I guess my only criticism of Dancing with the Moonlit Moonlit Night is that unlike the musical box where it has a, another climax, it just kind of fades out. But because it just has that more polished edge, I give it number one, at least at the time of recording this and the time I was writing this. So there you go, those are my top 10 favorite songs from Genesis while Peter Gabriel was in the band. But enough about me, what are your favorite Genesis songs? They can be from the Peter Gabriel era, they can be from any era. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you actually listen to a lot of Genesis because Genesis, I feel like, is a band from the 70s that doesn't have quite the same staying power with the younger generation that other bands from the 70s did. And if you like this video, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe to this channel. I know it is a super big cliche to ask, but it really does help the channel grow and I really do appreciate it. Like always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you at the next video. Take care.